A lot of people have asked me, how do I develop TypeScript and JavaScript effectively inside a Webflow site? So I thought I'd make a quick video of a basic setup. Okay, first, before we get started, you're gonna wanna have VS Code installed or an editor of your choice. With that out of the way, I want you to go to the uh, repo that I'm going to include as a link. And from there, let's go ahead and clone that repo. So I'm going to clone it. Okay, great. So I have the files. Let's go ahead and open it. So I use Webpack in order to develop TypeScript and JavaScript inside of Webflow. And Webpack does many things, but for our purposes, it's going to do two different things. One, it's going to compile my TypeScript code down to JavaScript, and two, it's gonna serve that JavaScript code locally. Now, I'm gonna take a peek at the Webpack config files. There's a lot going on, but I just want to point out a import, couple important lines. First, in my Webpack Common, and Webpack Common is the configuration that both the dev and production builds use. You look at this first line, the entry line. This is where Webpack goes, uh, the first place it goes to look when it starts compiling the code. So it says, hey, I'm going to go to the source folder and look for the index.ts file which is right here, source index.ts. Now, if you didn't want to do TypeScript development and you want to do JavaScript development, you could just put a JS here and it would go to, in this instance, an index.js. You can change the file name, you can change the folder, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the other important piece is where does Webpack put the code once it is compiled. Um, it says here in the output, it's going to be named bundle.js, and we're going to put it in the dist folder. So that is up here. Great. Now there is one more important piece of config within Webpack I want to point out. In Webpack to serve my JavaScript code locally, I'll be using what's called the Webpack dev server. And I just followed along with the basic Webpack dev server setup on the Webpack docs. I'll include the link to that too. The one thing you won't find there are these headers. These headers are important because I will be serving the JavaScript from my local host domain and my Webflow site will be on my webflow.io domain. So these will prevent any kind of course issues. Okay, so Webpack config out of the way, I said that Webpack will be serving this index.ts file to my local host. So in my package.json, I have a script that does exactly that. If you go to the serve script, you can see here I have the Webpack dev server is going to use the webpack dev config and serve my file. So let's just go ahead and do that. Run serve. Actually, that will get an error because we have not installed our packages yet. Let's install our packages and then run that same script again. Great, so we're getting our JavaScript serve to localhost 880. Let's take a peek at it. You can see localhost 880. Note, it doesn't actually in the path put the dist here. It just goes straight to the bundle.js. And here is our JavaScript. Now, that is a lot for one console log. So, all this extra code has to do with source maps and debugging. I'll get to that in a bit, but let's get our JavaScript from our local host inside of 
our webflow.io domain. So if we go to the readme, I have a script tag that we can place inside of our Webflow site. So I'm gonna to go to my Webflow site here and I'm gonna put the JavaScript in the home page. You can put your JavaScript in a bunch of different places, the HTML embed in a page or on all the pages. It really just depends on what the JavaScript is doing. For our purposes, I'm just gonna put this here. I'm gonna go ahead and publish this. And here is my Webflow site. Now you can access the console, and this is inside Chrome, by right clicking and hitting inspect, or you can press F12. So you can see I'm getting the console log from my index.ts file. And if we go to that file, and let's change the log, refresh the page, we will see the new log. Now, this is a way better setup than being inside HTML embed, changing the JavaScript, then publishing it, then seeing what it does and going back. You don't wanna do that. You want to be hosting your JavaScript locally and put it into a webflow.io site so that you can see the changes really quickly and have that feedback loop be really tight. Now, I talked about all that extra code inside the index.bundle.js that had to do with debugging and source maps. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's just throw an error. And you can see it's recompiled the code. Let's go back to our site. We should get an error here. Great, so we have a new uncaught error, new error, we get index.ts, and it shows exactly the file where the error came from and even highlights where the error is. This is great, this is super helpful for debugging. Even better, if we are importing a function from another folder and we wanna find where the error is coming from and it happens to be coming from a file in a different folder, we can actually see that. So to illustrate that, I'm gonna create a test file. And this test file is just gonna export a function that throws an error. Test error. And then let's import this into index.ts. Again, we have to do it here because this is where Webpack is looking for the files. So I'm going to do import test from, I don't know why I said folder name, I'm bad at naming. And then let's just call the test function. So if I run this again, I go to the console, we can see the test errors come up and I can see it's in the test file even better, I can see where the test function was called. It was called from the index.ts. So we can follow the whole stack trace down. Now, this is great. We have a great way to use TypeScript and JavaScript and have a tight feedback loop when we are developing inside of Webflow. But when we go to production, you can't ship something with a local host tag because this will be on somewhere else in the world and they won't have access to your local host. This local host is coming directly from your computer. So there's two different options for compiling production code and putting it into your Webflow site. One is to just compile it and put it inside a script tag. Um, the other is to compile it and serve it from a CDN. Now, serving it from a CDN is a topic probably for a whole nother video. So for our purposes, we're just going to compile the, the TypeScript into JavaScript and put it inside a script tag. So in our package.json, I had another script 
that will take webpack and it'll use the webpack prod config. So let's go ahead and do that. NPM run, build. Great. So it came over here. It spit out our production build of JavaScript. You can tell it's kind of ugly, not really human readable. That's because it's optimized for production. Now, this part right here is to help with source maps. Um, this is helpful if you have an error monitoring system. Um, and this probably related if you are serving from a CDN and error monitoring itself could probably be a whole nother video. So our, for our purposes, we really only need to copy this portion. Now we can go ahead and put that inside of a script tag. Great. So now the code is coming from the webflow.io domain site itself and not localhost. And we're getting that same error, but we can see it's coming from the script tag. Let's put something sensible besides an error inside that test file. Just do another console log. And we have to rebuild it again. And let's place it inside of the script tag again. Okay, save, publish. Great, let's check it out. Make sure we're getting the hello world and we are. Awesome. So that was just a quick and basic setup for using JavaScript and TypeScript inside of Webflow. Hopefully that helps speed up your development process. If you have any questions, let me know and I'm happy to make more videos like this.